This video will introduce customers of Safe Tempest to the legislation of reporting non-PAYE workers to the HMRC based on the Employment Intermediaries legislation that came into force on the 6th of April 2014. The topics covered are Why has this legislation been introduced? When does the report need to be produced? What is the definition of an employee? Who needs to be reported? What is a direct client? What data needs to be reported? The enhancements to Safe Tempest to cater for the reporting legislation, the next planned enhancements, and a brief overview of uploading the report. Why has this legislation been introduced? Businesses use intermediaries to get skilled staff at short notice for temporary engagements. Employment intermediaries play an important role in contributing to the UK economy. In recent years, HM Revenue and Customs has seen increasing evidence of growth in the use of some employment intermediaries as a way of facilitating full self-employment. This is to reduce employment taxes and avoid having to comply with statutory employment rights. The government has changed the rules that dictate when an intermediary must treat workers as their employees for income tax and national insurance purposes. From 6 of April 2014, intermediaries must treat workers as their employees when all the qualifying conditions within the revised agency legislation are met. Where workers are not treated as employees for PAYE purposes, these need to re be reported separately for each quarter in the tax year containing details of the workers and their payments. This report is for compliance monitoring rather than for obtaining payments to be made to the revenue. When should the report be produced? The report is required quarterly for each tax year from April 2015. The first reporting period is 6 of April 2015 to 5th of July 2015 and must be uploaded to the HMRC by the 5th of August 2015. The report can be replaced up to three months after the 5th of August 2015. If the report is late, incomplete or incorrect, a penalty may be incurred. There are automatic penalties for not sending a report or for sending a relate report. These are given on the number of offences in a 12-month period. These are £250 for the first offence, £500 for the second offence and £1,000 for a later offence. If there are 12 months or more between offences, you will only be charged £250 for the first offence in the new 12-month period. Where there is continued failure to send reports, or send reports late, you may receive a penalty every day that you don't send a report. There will be a new appeals process for these new penalties. For incomplete and in incorrect reports, manual penalties may apply on a case-by-case -case basis. If you replace a report before the deadline of the next reporting period without being asked to do so, HMRC will consider this when they decide if you have to pay a penalty. Definition of an employee The HMRC has defined what criteria would make a worker an employee. If any one of these items are met, the worker should be considered as an employee and taxed under PAYE, along with receiving other statutory employment rights. If the worker is placed within a UK-based client, if they pr provide personal services to the client, they provide their services to the client or is paid for their services because of a contract between an intermediary and the client, is or can be supervised, directed 
or controlled by someone as to how they work, isn't having the payments they receive for providing their services already treated as income. These conditions do not apply if a worker provides their services as an actor, singer, musician, other entertainer or a model, or from their home or somewhere that isn't controlled or managed by the client required by the nature of their services. So based on the fact that it has been established that the worker is not an employee, who should be included in the report? This is based on the information that is familiar to us in Safe Tempest. Any worker whose employment type is not PAYE, that is, contractors who have the legal status of self-employed, limited company and partnerships, or CIS workers. It also includes supplied workers from managed agencies and umbrella companies. The legislation only wants to know those workers who have been paid rather than those who are speculative workers, that is, put onto the books just in case. This also includes workers where they are booked to work at a client to whom the agency has a direct relationship. What is a direct client? Part of the legislation requires that the intermediary who has the relationship with the client to whom the worker is being sent will be required to report the worker onto the employment intermediary report. This adds complexity where a worker is recruited via a further agency in a chain, such as a managed agency or an umbrella company. The end agency would need to obtain information from the managed agency or umbrella company to obtain the worker's status. In the example illustrated, Managed Agency RS Limited would only need to report Worker 1 on their report, where the worker was not PAYE of course, as Worker 1 worked directly at an end client organised by the Managed Agency. Although Worker 2 has been recruited through Managed Agencies RS Limited, the worker's assignment was via Staff Resources Limited, and so this intermediary would need to report Worker 2, even though Staff Resources Limited did not pay the worker. Please note that if Worker 2 was also placed at another end client rather than through another intermediary, Managed Agency RS Limited would also need to report Worker 2 and their earnings worked at their end client. Where this occurs, it is the employment intermediary who has the closest relationship with the end client that would need to obtain the contractor's details and their company information from the managed agency. What needs to be reported? These are the personal details of the workers including partners within a partnership and limited company directors who personally provide their services to the client. These details must be included no matter how many intermediaries are involved in supplying the worker to the client. The intermediary sending the report must get these details from the worker or from any other intermediary that supplied the worker. You should include each worker's full name, address and postcode national insurance number, if they have one, and you don't know their date of birth and gender, date of birth and gender, if they don't have a national insurance number. The engagement type is important, as this defines the reason why you didn't operate PAYE on the worker's payments. The options are self-employed, partnership, limited liability partnership, limited company including personal service companies, non-UK engagement, another party operated PAYE on the workers' payments. In Safe Tempest, the options that correspond to our employment types are A, B, D, E or F. You will see later how these options function in Tempest. If more than one reason applies, select the option that comes first on the list. For example, if A and E both apply, the initial option would be selected. 
The worker's unique taxpayer reference is required if they are self-employed or a member of a partnership. Start date of work with the client. This will be the start date of the first period they were paid for. Leave date. This will be the leave date of employment if there is one. The payments made for each employment for the worker's services. This figure is only output where the worker is not paid by PAYE elsewhere. If the supplier is flagged as being VATable and thus the payments will naturally include VAT, this flag will be set. The full name or trading name and address of who the intermediary paid for the worker's services. This may be the worker's company or partnership. Company's house registration number. This is only required if the worker was engaged to do the work through a limited company. Features of Tempest. In the first phase of this development, we are concentrating on the data capture for this requirement. We have included the ability to assign default engagement statuses for supplied workers. Additional fields on the worker details screens. Automatic application of engagement status. Direct client flags against clients assignments and timesheets. Updates to the import layouts and an initialization routine for pre-existing data. Engagement status. As pointed out previously, the engagement status of the contractor is an important field for the employment intermediaries report. It identifies the reason why the workers are contractors. The different engagement statuses that are in use in Safe Tempest are self-employed, limited company, partnership, working overseas and being paid as PAYE elsewhere. The first three options can be determined by the legal status held on the supplier record linked to the contractors and the engagement status is automatically applied by Safe Tempest. However, for supplied workers, that is umbrella or managed agency workers, Safe Tempest cannot automatically determine the engagement status, as it is not known how the second tier agencies are paying these workers. It may be the case that you have agreements with your second tier agencies as to the engagement status of their workers. For example, in the majority of cases, the workers will be paid as PAYE. If so, a default option can be set in Safe Tempest to automatically apply so that they are not required to enter the engagement status for each supplied worker. If your supplied workers do have different engagement statuses, it is the responsibility of the agency to apply the individual engagement status. You may need to consider reviewing your front office processes to capture this requirement. With regards to the option of overseas, this indicates if the worker is a UK employee but is working abroad. If this applies to your workers, it will be a manual application of the setting of the flag. In the Suppliers tab in Employer Maintenance, Two new fields are made available to set the default engagement status for managed agency workers and umbrella workers. If a default status has been applied, these will inherit either when importing using a generic import type, within payroll starters or in worker entry. If they are left blank, it is expected for the users to enter the required status for each managed agency or umbrella worker. Please note that you are not warned that the status is blank when a supplied worker is applied to Safe Tempest, as it is assumed that this will be revisited at a later date when you have the information. In the worker entry screen, there are two new fields added, engagement status and non-CISUTR number. The engagement status field is visible when the worker type is not PAYE. 
This field will be automatically populated for contractor worker types based on their legal status held on the supplier record. Should you require a different engagement status for the contractor, this can be overridden. For supplied workers, if the defaults on the employer maintenance are populated, Safe Tempest will automatically populate the engagement status from these defaults. If there are no defaults, the field will remain blank unless populated manually. The non-CIS UTR field is visible when the engagement status is self-employed. If the contractor is a CIS worker, you must still enter the UTR number against the supplier record. This is so the current CIS monthly return and validation for UTR number for construction industry workers remains the same. If the CIS worker is a partnership, the UTR number must be completed under the non-CIS UTR field. This is because we are reusing an existing UTR number that was not extensively used and it has been moved against the worker rather than the supplier. The reason the UTR number has been applied to the worker record and not against the supplier record is because supplied workers do not have their own supplier record. They are recorded against the managed agency or umbrella company. The UTR number is unique to the worker and if a supplied worker is self-employed, it would need to be recorded against the worker and not against the employer. If you have supplied workers whose engagement status is self-employed, you must obtain the UTR number from the second tier agencies. Client maintenance. It is important to identify those clients with whom you have a direct relationship with. Where there is a direct relationship, the workers that are sent to the client will need to appear on the report. Some of our customers operate a managed agency where they are sending workers to other agencies to forward on to a client. Where this is the case, the client is not considered our direct client, and so the worker information will not need to appear on the report. To identify if a client is a direct client, a new flag has been added to client maintenance in the defaults tab. This flag has been configured to default to true as it is anticipated that in a majority of cases you have the direct relationship with the client. If this is not the case, you will be required to change this flag to false. In assignment maintenance, assignments will inherit the EIR direct client setting from the client but can be overridden if required. It would be overridden, for example, if you are a managed agency and your client record in Safe Tempest is used for both providing a worker directly or where a worker you have supplied to another agency to work for and so the flag will be different for each assignment and you may not wish to set up another client record. In Timesheets, Timesheets will inherit the EIR direct client setting from the assignment. If there is no assignment, it will inherit from the client but can be overridden if required. To capture the additional information, the direct client flag on clients, assignments and timesheets have been added to the standard import layouts for versions 9.02 and version 7.68. The engagement status and UTR number have been added to the worker layout. The revised layouts have been documented in the release notes that accompany the software release. If you have customised import routines, please contact your account manager to schedule the required development. Please note that your current import layouts will not fail if these fields are not populated. We have not made these fields mandatory in Safe Tempest. Further changes we have made in Tempest relating to EIR is to the payroll starters routine, which will now automatically apply the engagement status of suppliers where an engagement status has not been supplied for contractor employment types based on their legal status of their supplier record, or an engagement status has not been supplied for managed agency or umbrellas and default settings have been supplied on the employer. If an engagement status has been supplied for contractors, the system will accept the status and not use the override. 
Should you archive your contractors and you then subsequently reload them, the engagement status and UTR number will be brought back from the archive record into the live record. Within supplier maintenance, a field called Schedule D has been hidden from the screen, as this related to previous HMRC legislation, which was replaced by the UTR number. It has been hidden to avoid any confusion with the recording of data for suppliers. The web inquiry screens have been modified to include the new EIR fields. The main calculation will determine the earnings that need to be reported on the EIR report based on if the EIR direct client flag is set to true and if the worker's employment type is not a PAYE worker. The earnings calculated are based on the base currency as the value to be stored if using multi-currency, ad hoc payments that are not flagged as a deduction, VAT that is paid excluding managed agency and umbrella workers, and manual transactions. These earnings are stored in a separate table so that the data can easily be accessed for when the EIR report is produced. As the delivery of the enhancements for EIR reporting is after the 6th of April 2015, the earnings for the direct client need to be captured and the engagement status is set for existing workers. An initialization routine has been provided for this purpose. Before you proceed with the initialization of data, you need to decide if you need to set the managed agency and umbrella default engagement status on the employer. You also need to confirm if the EIR direct client flag needs to be changed from true to false against the client. This process will only initialise workers who are live from 2015 or have been archived in 2015, so that older archived workers are excluded. The employer field is mandatory and to the employer that you wish to update. The division field is optional, leave blank for all divisions. The worker field, you can enter an individual worker to initialise, leave blank for all workers. Apply managed agency worker engagement default. This is an optional field. If you have set the default on the employer, this field will be enabled. When checked, it will apply the default to managed agency workers where the engagement status has not already been set. If the refresh existing data field is checked, this will change all managed agency workers engagement status to the default that has been applied. Apply umbrella company worker engagement default. This is an optional field. If you have set the default on the employer, this field will be enabled. When checked, it will apply the default to umbrella workers where the engagement status has not already been set. If the refresh existing data field is checked, this will change all umbrella worker engagement status to the default that has been applied. Apply contractor engagement status. This is an optional field. When checked, Safe Tempest will determine contractor engagement status based on their legal status held on the supplier record. Generate direct client earnings. This is an optional field. When checked, Safe Tempest will calculate the earnings the worker has earned at direct clients and populate the EIR reporting earnings table. Use direct client indicator from. This will become enabled when generate direct client earnings is checked. It is to define the level from where the indicator should be used, client, assignment or timesheet. This is because the flag could have been set differently at any one of these levels at any point in time before the initialization routine has been run. Therefore, 
You need to decide from where Save Tempest should obtain the flag setting. If in doubt, choose Client. From Tax Year to Tax Year and Period, you may have installed the latest Tempest version, set the direct client flag appropriately and processed a few weeks before running the initialization. In which case, Safe Tempest has started to collate the earnings data already. Therefore, there may be a period of time that only needs updating. You are able to define the time frame that you wish to capture. If in doubt, enter the start of the tax year up to the last period that you closed. Refresh existing data. This should be used with care as it will update earnings and engagement statuses that have already been applied. This option allows you to reset the data in case an error has been made. When the initialization routine is completed, a record of the batch process will be stored in the calculation history table for reference of the process occurring. Click the proceed button to continue with the process. Future features. Following this development release, we will be providing a quality standards check for contractors. This will be checking for missing or invalid data for the output of the EIR report. There will be a separate menu item as well as the option to include the validation within payroll starters. We will also produce the report output in CSV so that users can then upload to the HMRC. From statutory release 2016, we will be applying further screen validation for contractors so that data errors can be dealt with at point of entry. This will allow our customers to ensure that processes have been changed prior to the validation being introduced. Uploading a report. Although in this release of Safe Tempest, the report output is yet to be provided, it is important to understand how the report will eventually be uploaded to the HMRC. The report output is in CSV format and is to be submitted via your HMRC account and not through PAYE online. The reason the HMRC has decided on this delivery method is that not all intermediaries have software systems that can transfer data electronically. If operating a bureau basis for your clients, whoever has access to the HMRC account will need to upload the reports for each individual client. There is no mass upload facility for this type of operation. If you have multiple employers on your payroll system with the same accounts office reference, multiple reports can be uploaded and does not need to be consolidated onto one report. The file size is limited to 21 megabytes. The HMRC has tested this with 10,000 records and has not yet exceeded this amount. Safe Tempest will be using the same mechanism as for the production of FPSs that will automatically spit the files as necessary. When you upload the report, it is a drag and drop process and you will be alerted instantly if there are errors on the report. The report will still be accepted with errors, but as indicated previously, penalties could be incurred. An example of how the HMRC screen will look is as follows. Thank you for your time in watching this video and we hope that you have found it useful.